Hey, Josh back with another video. Today I've got some new boxes from Blazar and we're gonna open these up. So, ooh. Let's get these out of here. Nice. They feel just like they did at NAB. A nice tightly placed uh, screwdriver. Warranty cards. Got some spare gaskets. We got a 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.5. A couple in each bag. So I'm really excited for these lenses because um, I'm looking for something to give me a little more character. And of course, anamorphic is exciting. Uh, so I've wanted anamorphic lenses for a while. Being able to, to see what these did. Um, the character, the distortion, um, the flares, everything. I had looked at other options, other lenses, and you know, I just wasn't loving the image from a lot of the other uh, budget anamorphics. These represent a really cool step in lens technology that I'm excited about, and I can't wait to put these to work on a project um, in a couple days. I don't use PL mounts on my cameras at the moment. Um, I probably will at some point. So I'm gonna go ahead and unbox the EF mounts that they sent. We're shooting on Sony cameras, FX6, FX30, FX3. Uh, and so uh, we've got EF mount adapters. And I like that when they ship these, they left room for the next lens. Now for the little box. Only people like us enjoy the things that come in boxes like this. So I hope some of you who were at NAB um, took advantage of the show special they were running there. It was really nice being able to get hands-on, uh, play with the lenses, talk to the Blazar team. Um, thank you to Cameron for getting our lenses out quickly. We appreciate that. Um, and we are excited to get them to work this week. So, wow, that is a lightweight mount. I almost wonder if it's plastic, but it's not. It's metal. It's just very lightweight. That is nice. I like that. Cool. Pop that ring off. So now I'm going to go ahead and change this mount out. You can see inside here, this has holes and it's got like a nice hollowed out design. So looks like it's going to I mean, it is extremely lightweight. I've done other uh, PL and EF mounts before that have been much heavier. So it's nice that this is very light, which goes you know, in line with these lenses. These are just very lightweight lenses in general. So that's nice. So here we go. So I'll just spin this loose. All right, just gonna loosen those screws. I like to loosen a little bit um, all the way around just to make sure that we don't kind of warp or distort anything with too much tension change all at once. Hey, magnetic tip. Look at you guys. Two, three. Don't like scratch your glass element too as you're doing this. I mean, what am I talking about? You guys are like professional video people watching this, right? So you would know, don't scratch the lens. That's like for other people. Why are, you, why are you watching this? No one who doesn't know that wants to watch this. Okay, so in a PL mount, which I guess I could have showed you this earlier, right? I just put all the screws. Um, there's a locking pin in there. So I'm um, not just on the mount itself, but also like in the lens and all this good stuff. So, so we'll slide that up and off. There you have that. Now, inside here, you'll see we got that same locking pin. Okay, so that's slipped in, got the pin. So I'm just gonna reuse these same screws, leave these ones in the bags. Put these same screws right back in. Kinda gently start each screw. If I had a really good top-down camera, this would probably be a lot more exciting. However, not scratching my lens elements is more important to me than making a cool video for you to watch. 
We'll just put this whole thing in a time lapse anyway. No one's ever going to want to watch all of this. And then this is the ring for the EF mount. So we'll pop that back in. This is now an EF mount. Since I'm on Sony, we got to put this onto an E mount. So I've got um, some different adapters here. So this is the Sigma and nice solid connection. Just a hair of wiggle, which, you know, is always going to be there. Um, but a very solid connection. That feels good to me. And then just a cheap, you know, Amazon Fotasi, uh all metal, no electronics, which we use with uh, more of our, our cinema lenses. Okay, interesting to note, that one is really tight. Yeah, I can hear it wanting to start to grind the metal, so I'm going to stop. $15, $20 adapter, this is like a $200 adapter. So that was definitely one thing I wanted to look at. Well, we're not going to use these, um, but works fine on this guy. So this is a 65 millimeter anamorphic lens. This is my favorite of the bunch. Do have a front thread, I believe of 77 millimeters, if I remember correctly. Uh, so we can get those onto our matte boxes. We'll have to check vignetting and all that good stuff. Obviously the uh, PL mount looks cooler. And when you pop a PL mount on a P mount, mount adapter, you know, that looks a little beefier. But, uh, you know, this works. Right now we're opened up at T2. We're at minimum focus. Two feet, four inches. No wonder I can't find the anamorphic de-squeeze option because I've got version 2.0 of the firmware on my camera. If you cannot find the anamorphic de-squeeze in your camera, go check the firmware version. So this is wide open at F2. Shot with me pretending I can see that I'm in focus and that my de-squeeze is okay. Right now I'm at F4. And if I just kind of step through the range, so there's five, six, there's eight, 11, 16, and 22. Back to four, which is where I have the scene exposed for. There's two eight. There's two four. And there's two. And this is on the 65 millimeter. Now for a field of view match test. So 43 millimeters, which appears to be around there. So that should be a fairly equivalent shot height wise. I will say that this does seem like a very nicely designed system, um, even though these would be considered budget anamorphics. It doesn't feel like a budget system. Um, everything feels very well built, well designed, well thought out, sturdy. It doesn't feel cheap in any way. So having just converted all three of my Remuses to EF mount, I feel like that was a super easy swap. It was super easy, super fast. Now, of course, I didn't do any shimming. And so these are locked and loaded, ready to go. And we'll play with those later. Let's throw the 77 on. Yeah, zero to worry about. It's just a nice big front piece of glass right there. I love seeing a big front piece of glass. All right, so I'm currently filming this on my FX30, which is a crop sensor camera, uh, on a Sigma 18 to 35 at 18 millimeters. So, as we all know, this is not an anamorphic lens and it doesn't do anything exciting. But here's the Remus 45 at f2.8. I totally guessed on whether I'm in focus or not. But 
this lens will have some flares. There it is. Whoosh. As soon as it pans off the lens, but it hits that lens, boom. There we go. As long as that light hits that lens, we get those flares. Love it. And I got the blue flares because that's how anamorphics have always been. So now we're on the 65. Now remember, this is on a crop sensor, right? So we'll look at full frame sensor later, but I just wanted a quick comparison to what the 18 to 35 was doing. Um, so this is the 65 and flares. Yeah. Not that you're just gonna stand here and shine a flashlight into these lenses, but I mean, why not? And then here is the 100 millimeter. Uh, I stopped down to F4 on this one. We were at 2.8 on the others. Everyone says F4 is around where it cleans up. I'll do my own, you know, tests, but uh, somewhere in here, I'm in focus. Probably around there. Got some fun lens flares. Flares. So I even say that word flares. Got the flares. Give me those lens flares. <laughs> Anyways, um, there is a little bit on the lens unboxing. We'll do more later, but the box is open and the lenses are out and we're ready to blaze our forward. I shouldn't like make dumb jokes like that, you know? Like, this isn't like a dad joke podcast or anything, but <clears throat> oh well, too late. We'll do like one of those cool post zooms. I hope that's in focus right there. Like, shoo, pow.